Steve Buscemi's portrayals of psychos, bad guys, and oddballs have turned him into one of the most recognized and accomplished actors of his generation. And with his unique look comes a rather unique story. From being hit by a car and a bus as a child, to being stabbed, to becoming one of New York's finest heroes, Steve Buscemi has seen it all. But even the finest heroes experience heartbreak, and unfortunately for our beloved actor, he has had his fair share. From his struggles with anxiety to being faced with an overwhelming feeling of not fitting in, there was a time when Steve thought no one would be able to rid him of this fear. Steve Buscemi rarely opens up about his personal life, but he has allowed the world glimpses into his life, leaving everyone in awe of how he continues to move forward despite the many challenges that he has faced. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you're not a huge movie fanatic, you might not recognize his name, but once you see his face, you'll know exactly who he is. His heavy-lidded blue eyes are the crown jewels of his appearance and one of the most recognizable sets in the business. Unfortunately, growing up with his unique look left Buscemi feeling like an outcast and at many times filled him with unease. It may have also contributed to him experiencing anxiety when he was just a kid. However, Buscemi's first encounter with anxiety was when he was left alone at four years old, while his mom made a quick trip to the butcher across the street. Overwhelmed with a sense of loneliness, Steve ran over to find her. In a panic, Steve never looked while crossing and was hit by a bus. Although at the time it just seemed like bad luck, this incident would later be the reason he was able to pursue his acting career. This is because the city paid him $6,000 in compensation, which he later used to attend acting lessons. Being hit by a bus was unfortunately not the only near-death experience the actor encountered. He was also hit by a car when he was eight and stabbed by a stranger in a bar fight while out with the actor Vince Vaughn in 2001. On the matter, Buscemi said, I came close to death. That was probably the closest I've been. Could all these misfortunes have something to do with the fact that the actor was born on Friday the 13th, the unluckiest day of the year? Well, it depends on how superstitious you are. Buscemi comes from humble beginnings far rooted in wealth. He grew up in New York, his father worked in sanitation, and his mother was a hostess. They lived in a tiny apartment where he shared a room with his three brothers while his parents slept on a fold-out bed. Growing up in such a stressful environment, Buscemi's sense of belonging turned into a sense of survival. To make both ends meet, he had to work as an ice cream truck driver, a house mover, and a gas station attendant. Not your so-called Hollywood jobs. But his father knew that his son was destined for more and also needed direction in his life. So, he made him take the civil service exam when Steve was 18 years old. Soon after, Buscemi was a New York firefighter. Steve loved to help people, but he didn't always feel as though he fit in with his fellow firefighters. He knew deep down his love for acting would always be greater than his love for firefighting. So, while he fought flames by day, he extinguished hearts by night as he performed at improv clubs and went for auditions in his spare time. Buscemi's father was aware of his son's true calling and suggested he use his $6,000 compensation money to take acting classes. Buscemi has been an incredible actor from the moment he started, and it wasn't long until he landed the lead in the Bill Sherwood film, Parting Glances. A role that convinced Steve to quit his job as a firefighter to pursue his one true professional love. It didn't take long until producers and directors fell in love with the actor, and he quickly became the villain everyone wanted in their movies. Buscemi paid attention to his crooked teeth when he saw himself on the big screen for the first time, but he absolutely refused to have them fixed. Buscemi has said that he knew his teeth gave him an edge, and if he did something to change it, it could lead to the end of his career. I mean, I have had a number of dentists over the years <laughs> offering to help me out, and yeah. I always say, no, you're going to kill my career. I mean, I, I need to, you know, I need, I need these teeth. Uh -huh. this, is, this is what gets me work. <laughs> I think, I think. He's not wrong. Look at what happened to Dirty Dancing's Jennifer Grey when she fixed her nose. The actress herself regretted that decision, saying it made her invisible in Hollywood and totally ruined her career. Now, some actors make a show of their modesty, but for Buscemi, modesty is something that comes naturally. Once he made it in Hollywood, his circumstance changed, but his attitude towards himself didn't. Buscemi explained that when he directed an episode of The Sopranos, all he could think was, Oh my god, I don't belong here. Why would they listen to me? The night Buscemi won a SAG award, a fellow co-star wanted to introduce him to the cast of a popular TV show. This was like a great year, but I did have an ulterior motive. 
I wanted to meet the cast from Fleabag. Oh, um, yeah, and, uh, huge show. I yeah, love yeah, that yeah. show. Yeah. Even though Buscemi won one of the biggest awards of the night and should have felt invincible, he was still too nervous to talk to the cast. He feared they might find it too hard to talk to him. Has playing such a wide range of characters affected the way Buscemi sees himself? I'm an animal! <laughs> when talking about his characters, the actor said, I like the struggles that people have, people who are feeling like they don't fit into society, because I still sort of feel that way. Although Buscemi might not see himself as a hero, many would disagree. After the horrible events of 9-11 unfolded, Steve wasted no time putting his skills and knowledge to good use, even though at the time it had been almost 20 years since the actor had done any work for the fire department. Regardless, he helped the brigade sort through the wreckage in hopes of finding survivors, working almost 12 hours at a time. We're gonna be fine, they got this. He did, however, have one stipulation. He didn't want it to be advertised ever. Even when people wanted to take photos with him, he declined. When a photo emerged a decade later, Buscemi admitted in an interview that a part of helping out during those five days was a coping mechanism for him. During that time, he experienced anxiety and depression. With an overwhelming sense of not knowing where to be and what to do, he needed to find a way to fight through it. I went there to help, and they ended up helping me. By now we know that acting and firefighting were two major loves in his life. Even though at times they left him feeling like an outsider, there was, however, one other love, the biggest one of them all, that never made him feel like he doesn't belong. In 1983, Buscemi met the love of his life, Joe Andres, who lived just across the street from him. Andres was slightly older and already renowned in the performance art world, and it took one look for Buscemi to develop a crush on her. He would continuously rush out of his apartment at the same time as Joe, hoping he'd accidentally run into her. He was consciously doing this until they eventually met, and it wasn't long after before the two became an item. Talk about the ultimate meet-cute. Buscemi, who was used to feeling like an outsider, admitted that it was his wife who helped shape the confidence he has today. I was very shy. I would look around and see all these cool looking people and felt like I could not fit in. Joe became a huge influence in Buscemi's life. She helped him understand what is possible within himself. She taught an anxious and analytical man how to tap into his intuitive side and showed him how to trust himself more. So much so that he went on to play characters that have shaped cinematic history. Buscemi was about to comfortably enter his icon era in 2015 before the most precious woman of his life was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Although she went through chemotherapy and was in remission for a while, the cancer came back with vengeance in 2017. The artist and choreographer passed away in January 2019. In an interview with GQ magazine, Buscemi admitted with a catch in his voice that the pain of the cancer was the hardest thing for her to go through. People who are going through that, it's painful. It's painful to die from cancer. There's just no way around it. Although Buscemi lost his wife, he knew she was still watching him from above. Just after her passing, he honored her in a speech to the National Association of Theater Owners. You know, this business can be a challenge to relationships, but you stick it out and there are rewards, and I am so grateful to her. She was my biggest supporter and also audience and my biggest inspiration. Buscemi went through the darkest time of his life with days where he felt like he was drowning. Whenever he had to leave the house for work, he would be overwhelmed with a sense of distress being so far from home. This makes sense as the actor and his late wife's number one rule was to never be apart more than three weeks from each other. A year after his wife's death, Buscemi has found a way to keep her close to him as he tried to collect, preserve, and archive her life's work. In a way, he's giving her something back after the life she gave him. After spending more than 30 years together, the actor admitted that he never really thought what it would be like to not have her around. He hopes that this is a way to keep her close. Despite the lingering effects of his devastating loss, Buscemi felt a bit of hope by seeing communities come together to support one another amid the coronavirus health crisis. If it was another personal thing, I think that would be hard, but the fact that everybody's going through it doesn't feel as isolating. It feels like it's something that we're doing together. Despite now having to walk without the solace that always made him feel as though he belongs, it seems as though Steve Buscemi has managed to find a way to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.